Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Stone Toad, and today I'm gonna be talking about the multiverse again. Here's the deal in order to travel to some far out universe that's not similar to the one you're in right now, and uh, at first I believe that uh, every time you go to bed, you travel to a different a different timeline. I don't think I believe that anymore. I think that some people travel to different timelines, but I think that honestly, the soul and its many branches uh, stay where they are within universes most of the time, unless one of the branches of the soul figures out that it can switch with another branch and just twist all the branches up like computer cords. And uh, that's, that's my mission, is to tangle up the cords to my soul. <laughs> but not really in a bad way. <clears throat> Just to kind of connect all of my parallel lives <clears throat> is what I've been doing. There's a lot of versions of me uh, that uh, are aware of this version of me. <clears throat> yeah. So, in order to travel to far out universes, and by far out, I mean far out, like... If you want to go from the life that you have right now, it, like in an instant, this isn't a transformation or some method of manifestation, this is travel in the multiverse. This is sci-fi level shit right here, okay? <coughs> and, uh, it's serious. This is not a joke, this is not some flaky woo-foo new age bs this is like serious actual extreme stuff this is magic okay so in order to travel to far out universes now that i've uh you know 215 in two minutes and 15 seconds in in order to do that you have to strengthen the key the key has to be strong in order to enter far outdoors now I'll show you a symbol. Uh, this is the this is my sigil uh, for the key to the multiverse, and uh, sigil is just a symbol. It came from my subconscious. My subconscious gave me the key to the multiverse a long time ago. Even though I I actually figured out that I've been traveling in the multiverse since I was little, um, because I actually remembered when I was little. Uh, you know, I think earlier this week sometime. Anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, the symbol that I was given for the key to the multiverse, or you can simply know what it, fe like, if you've traveled in the multiverse, if you've jumped to parallel timelines, parallel universes, then you know what it feels like to shift, you know, it, you know the feeling that happens, you know what it feels like when you wake up, you know that, you know, when you don't remember like, you, you can feel, oh, no, this isn't, I'm not in the right body right now. You know what that feels like. If you can just condense that feeling into some artistic form like a symbol, that will do as well. It doesn't have to come out of a dream or something. Or if you can just get that feeling to just swirl around in your heart like a blender, blending up, blending stuff. <laughs> If you can get that feeling, that's all you need. If you can get the symbol, that's all you need. Just get the key, okay? That is the key to the multiverse, and what you have to do is you have to charge it. If you want to be a denizen of the multiverse, and I got that phrase from the Midnight Gospel, by the way. If you want to be a denizen of the multiverse, traveling between parallel lives and just, just generally jumping all the time for a while I, I was on a hiatus with jumping into parallel universes but now I have permanently like it, it, it. anyway that's a whole nother story but I can tell you this I know now for 100% fact and in my own experience I'm not you and I'm not going to prove this to you you have to experience it yourself otherwise everything I'm saying is bullcrap okay just Experiment, try stuff out yourself, but 
I know for a hundred percent fact within me that uh this is one hundred and fifty percent real. It's not in my head. It's not uh astrally traveling to a parallel universe. It's not uh just gaining memories from a parallel universe because I'm in a parallel universe. Because I made a I decided because normally I have a very strong key. Uh, a very strong, this is the key, I have a very strong charged with energy key, um, so I can jump to just far out universes straight out of just nowhere land that just blow your head, that it just, the difference between universes can just blow your mind when you get the key stronger, um, but yeah, I decided to travel to a very similar universe, and what I did was I changed my shoes. I had, uh, Nike shoes, and they were, like, a slightly grayish, a uh, grayish black, and this is just gonna sound crazy to everyone in this universe, uh, because they don't know, but, um, I guess you guys don't know either. I had, uh, these shoes, and, uh, in this universe, the spikes on the bottom, they're one of those massage shoes. They were Nike massage shoes, okay, and the points on them were spiky instead of rounded, and so they were burning my feet when I ran, and so I figured, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go to a universe where these shoes are literally a different brand, a slightly different color, and don't hurt my feet anymore. Literally, when I woke up the next day, I didn't pay any mind to what my shoes looked like, but when I was in the car texting my sister, saying, hey, yeah, I jumped to a parallel universe the other day, I noticed, oh, yeah, that's what happened. Because I couldn't really spot it. I could feel the shift, but I couldn't feel what changed. And then I looked at my shoes. Oh, well, it still has changed. Every time I've traveled to a parallel universe before that, I've decided to come back. And a lot of the time you'll just loop back around and come back unconsciously, but I figured out how to stop that from happening. And the way you stop it from happening is you have to really figure out how to ground yourself when you get to the desired universe, because I was not grounding myself properly. I was grounding myself in the other universe, which was causing me to just snap back. But I figured it out now, Okay. Uh, now, if you want to, if you want to be able to travel to far out universes, you're gonna have to go within your subconscious, or go within your heart, which uh, in also with the uh, tree of life, it's also called the Tiferes Center. But you know what? I'm not gonna call it that because it sounds weird. So within your heart, just get the feeling, or get the symbol, get the sigil, whatever. And in, you have to do it in your mind. If you're just focusing on a piece of paper, well, actually focusing on a piece of paper can work, but don't imagine the energy coming into the paper. Just imagine in your head that it's a code. It's a code in your consciousness, okay? You're a device, and that code is an application, and you're updating that application every time you put energy into it, and it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger until you're able to jump to... I can't even articulate the types of universes. Now I'm not talking about higher dimensions or psychedelic realms or anything like that. I'm talking about actual third dimensional realities, versions of reality that are just oh, like far out. They are, and I, I'm saying far out a lot, but they are not even, <sighs> there are, <sighs> yeah, I, I can't, anyway. But yeah, keep this symbol in your mind when you're working, not this symbol, but keep your symbol in your mind or your feeling in your heart when you're working out to charge it. That's when you work out, you can charge it that way. Or uh, when you're met or, or when you're doing breath work, when you're doing the Wim Hof breathing technique or holotropic breath work, just keep the symbol in your head. Or, or the feeling in your heart, either, either one, uh, and just keep it lockjawed right in there. And the whole time that you're doing your breath work or your, uh, or your working out or anything, 
and that's that's how the, sy the symbol is going to get stronger. I'm also going to cover something that I never really covered before, because I didn't really see so much of a purpose in it. Now, this is the weird thing. When I first started uh, jumping into parallel universes, jumping timelines, the thing was that basically I would start the process, okay? I would set it in motion, and then I would fall asleep while it was happening, and I didn't notice that what was happening while I was shifting into this universe. But what happens if you, if you are one of the people that are going to stay awake the entire time that this is happening, like I have recently started doing? You're going to first feel like you're falling, but it's different from the vibrational stage of astral projection. I have astral projected a few times successfully. I'm, I really am not good at it, but I have been trying. I have uh, this symbol here. This is uh, I went into my subconscious and got the astral projection sigil, and that's that for me. Only my subconscious, not yours. Uh, it's going to be different for everybody. Or maybe it won't be. Maybe you'll have the exact same pie-looking thing as me, but... Yeah. Um, you're going to feel like you're falling. It's going to be different from the vibrational stage in astral projection. You're, you're going to actually feel like, uh, while you're laying on your bed, your bed is just falling from the sky. Um, and then you're going to kind of feel warm. But not really warm, but like if it's cold, the temperature is just going to go... Ooh perfect and if it's warm the warmth is just gonna like sink into your bones and feel like the best thing ever and then everything is gonna go for me it goes yellow okay it's just gonna everything is just gonna go yellow for a second and you're gonna hear a really loud uh sound that kind of sounds like a, a ringtone going like they're, like the Android ringtone is like, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, but except it's gonna start going really really fast, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then you're gonna fall asleep after that point. I've never been able to stay awake past that point. I don't know what happens after that point, but when you wake up, you're in a parallel universe. You're in a parallel timeline. Um, and you can stay there. You can actually stay there. You don't. Like, it's not something where you're always going to end up back where you started, because at this point, where did I start? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what happens when you jump into a parallel timeline. As for time travel, I, I have no incentive to practice time travel. Yeah, I, I, I don't have an incentive to practice time travel. The time travel... If I wanted to, like, re... Okay, this is the deal. If you want to time travel to change a, uh, a circumstance or a set of events, then you can just go to a parallel universe where the events were just different. It's easy as that. You can just go to a parallel universe where it was different. But if you're going to time travel and uh, change it yourself, you're going to be like, I'm going to fix my OG universe. Then you're still not fixing your OG universe because your OG universe was a timeline. You're just moving the timeline that you were on consciously um, by hand instead of just doing it the easy way. So there's no point in that. Um, and also, if you want to re-experience something, if you just want to relive part of your life uh, with with uh, knowledge that you have already gained, well, you don't want to do it when you're too young because your memories just start, f like, fading away because your brain is so malleable. You don't want to go when you're too young. When you're too young, like, you don't want to time travel back too far because <laughs> you might, you know, get stuck there and then have to relive the whole thing, or at least I speculate that's what happened. I hope that didn't already happen or something. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I went back to when I was seven, and my I, I, I felt my memories were, like, going away. Is this real? Was was I really 15? Uh, wait a minute. And then at that point, I decided, wait, no, it was real. I have to go back now. So I went back because I could feel my memories just slipping away. 
Um, so, yeah. If any of you have successfully gone to parallel universes, um, please say so in the comments. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear the universes that you have been in. Oh, man, I've been to some interesting, interesting timelines. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you all the timelines because it seems kind of arbitrary to tell you about something that doesn't exist in this timeline. It exists in the timeline that it exists in, that I've been to, but it doesn't exist here, so it, it seems kind of arbitrary. Um, it won't affect you in any way, and it won't affect me in any way, either, in this universe, or my experience in this universe, uh, Man, it's really weird. Oh, yeah, and then what I was going to tell you about, uh, um, and by the way, it's 2 in the morning right now. What time is it? It's 2.30 in the morning right now. And I just decided that it was a good time to make a video. Let's put it there. So, yeah. Um, chaos magic. That's what I was talking about. And, no, I'm not talking about uh, the mention of Chaos Magic that uh, was in WandaVision. I didn't know about that movie. Like, I knew about Chaos Magic before I knew about that movie. Um, and I don't I don't know if that movie has came out yet. I don't really plan to watch it. I was, I'm not, like, super excited about it, but I heard that there was a mention of Chaos Magic in it. And uh, I guess there are a lot of people that learned about it from that show. But, basically... Uh, this is, this is the whole principle of chaos magic. Nothing is, nothing exists. Everything is permissible. I don't know where that quote came from, but I've seen it on the internet recently, and it just, it just kind of clicks in my head. Nothing exists, everything is permissible. Uh, and another thing that clicks in my head that has been said by a lot of chaos magicians is, we're in a dream loop. Uh, the the idea of we're in a dream loop is when the multiverse got exposed to me at first, um, and that's the, in a large way that's what this represents is that nothing is real. We're in a dream loop, uh, and so basically everything is ran by consciousness already. What we don't understand is that uh, everything is being controlled by our thoughts. Our emotions, we create egregores, we create spirits, we create the archangels and the angels. It was all created by consciousness. It was all codes. Everything is just a code in reality. I'll give you an, exma an example. I'll give you an example of uh, chaos magic that I don't want you to replicate, but this is an example. Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls is not a real or a traditional spirit. He's from a cartoon. Okay, he's a dream demon from a cartoon. Um, and Chaos Magic basically says, if you can accomplish something by summoning Bill Cipher, then that's real magic. Because it's a thought form. It's consciousness. People know what that is, and they associate Bill Cipher with a personality and a set of powers and a set of effects. And the same way with, like, say, the Lich from Adventure Time. People associate it, and therefore it's real. In the same way as I believe that the veil between, just the veil, just the veil, the veil of reality and dream is breaking. And I think consciousness is going to reveal itself fully to be the master of reality. Because our dreams, we're going to enter the dreamscape. The veil between the third dimension, and the dreamscape will break. Um, oh, I got chills down my spine from that, and I've believed that for a long time now, because I've seen it in dreams. It's gonna break. And, uh, well, what are they calling that? Oh, yeah, it's like, a. In the New Age community, they say you're going to start manifesting lightning fast. And the reason for that is because the veil is breaking. And I say the veil is breaking instead of being lifted because if it's being lifted, it can be put back down again. And I don't want that, obviously. So I'm just going to say, you know what? The veil is full of water. 
and it got frozen, then it got hit with a hammer, hit with a hammer, and now it's just broken. It's just breaking. It's in the process of cracking right now. And you know, like 200 years ago, people were illiterate, and the Bible was only in Latin. So, I think a big part of the veil breaking is the fact that people can read the Bible for what it actually says, and not for what, uh, mainstream Christianity, the Pope, or the preacher, the minister, or whatever, has put the spin on it of, or, uh, anyway, uh, and the fact that there are, like, other, like, everyone knows how to read now, so there's a lot of more information available, and, like, plus the internet, people are able to share their thoughts and become aware, that, like, they're not the only ones to experience jumping into parallel universes, um, but yeah, my phone's going to die soon, so I guess I'm going to have to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload. And uh, yeah, goodbye.